This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Peter Yearsley. Beowulf by Anonymous. Translated by Francis Barton Gamere. Section 5. Hrothgar spake, helmet of Skildings, Ask not of pleasure, pain is renewed to Danish folk. Dead is Aeschere of Irmenlaf, the elder brother, My sage adviser and stay in council, Shoulder comrade in stress of fight, When warriors clashed and we warded our heads, Hewed the helm of boars, Hero famed should be every earl as Aeschere was. But here in Hierot a hand hath slain him of wandering death sprite. I wot not whither, proud of the prey, her path she took, fain of her fill. The feud she avenged that yesternight unyieldingly. Grindel, in grimmest grasp thou killedst. Seeing how long these liegemen mine he ruined and ravaged, reft of life in arms he fell. Now another comes, keen and cruel, her kin to avenge, faring far in feud of blood, so that many a thane shall think, whoe'er sorrows in soul for that sharer of rings, this is hardest of heart bales. The hand lies low that once was willing each wish to please. Land dwellers here, and liegemen mine, who house by those parts, I have heard relate that such a pair they have sometimes seen, march stalkers mighty the moorland haunting, wandering spirits. One of them seemed, so far as my folk could fairly judge, of womankind, and one accursed. In man's guise trod the misery track of exile, Though huger than human bulk. Grendel, in days long gone, they named him folk of the land. His father they knew not, nor any brood that was born to him, Of treacherous spirits. Untrod is their home. By wolf-cliffs haunt they, and windy headlands, Fenways fearful, where flows the stream from mountains gliding to gloom of the rocks, underground flood. Not far is it hence in measure of miles that the mere expands, and o'er it the frost-bound forest hanging, sturdily rooted, shadows the wave. By night is a wonder weird to see, fire on the waters. So wise lived none of the sons of men to search those depths. Nay, though the heath-rover harried by dogs the horn-proud heart, this halt should seek, long distance driven his dear life, first on the brink he yields, ere he brave the plunge to hide his head. Tis no happy place, thence the welter of waters washes up, one to welkin, when winds bestir evil storms, and air grows dusk, and the heavens weep. Now is help once more with thee alone, the land thou knowest not, place of fear, where thou findest out that sin-flecked being. Seek if thou dare, I will reward thee for waging this fight with ancient treasure as erst I did with winding gold, if thou winnest back. Beowulf spake, bairn of Egthjau, Sorrow not, sage, it beseems us better friends to avenge than fruitlessly mourn them. Each of us, all must his end abide in the ways of the world. So win who may, glory, ere death. When his days are told, that is the warrior's worthiest doom. Rise, O realm warder, ride we anon, and mark the trail of the mother of Grendel. No harbour shall hide her, heed my promise. Enfolding of field, or forested mountain, or floor of the flood, 
let her flee whence she will, but thou this day endure in patience, as I ween thou wilt, thy woes, each one. Leapt up the greybeard. God he thanked, mighty Lord, for the man's brave words. For Hrothgar soon a horse was saddled, wave main steed. The sovereign wise stately rode on, his shield-armed men followed in force. The footprints led along the woodland, widely seen, a path o'er the plain, where she passed, and trod the murky moor. Of men-at-arms she bore the bravest and best one, dead, him who with Hrothgar the homestead ruled. On, then, went the atheling born, o'er stone cliffs, steep and straight defiles, narrow passes and unknown ways, headlands sheer, and the haunts of the Nikors. Foremost he fared, a few at his side of the wisest men, the ways to scan, till he found in a flash the forested hill hanging over the hoary rock, a woeful wood. The waves below were dyed in blood. The Danish men had sorrow of soul, and for skildings all, for many a hero, t'was hard to bear, ill for earls, when Iscare's head they found by the flood on the foreland there. Waves were welling, the warriors saw, hot with blood. But the horn sang oft battle-song bold. The band sat down, and watched on the water worm-like things, sea-dragons strange that sounded the deep, and nicors that lay on the ledge of the ness such as oft essay at hour of morn on the road of sails their ruthless quest. And sea-snakes and monsters, these started away, swollen and savage that song to hear, that war-horn's blast. The warden of Giatz, with bolt from bow, then balked of life, of wave-work, one monster. Amid its heart went the keen war-shaft. In water, it seemed less doughty in swimming whom death had seized. Swift on the billows, with boar-spears well hooked and barbed, it was hard beset, done to death and dragged on the headland, wave Roma wondrous. Warriors viewed the grisly quest. Then girt him Beowulf in martial mail, nor mourned for his life. His breastplate broad and bright of hues, woven by hand, should the waters try. Well could it ward the warrior's body that battle should break on his breast in vain, nor harm his heart by the hand of a foe. And the helmet white that his head protected was destined to dare the deeps of the flood, the wave whirl win. T'was wound with chains, decked with gold as in days of yore. The weaponsmith worked it wondrously, with swine forms set it, that swords nowise brandished in battle could bite that helm. Nor was that the meanest of mighty helps which Hrothgar's orator offered at need. Runting they named the hilted sword, of old-time heirlooms easily first. Iron was its edge, all etched with poison, with battle-blood hardened nor blenched it at fight in hero's hand who held it ever, on paths of peril prepared to go to folkstead of foes. Not first time this it was destined to do a daring task, for he bore not in mind the bairn of Ecglaf sturdy and strong, that speech he had made, drunk with wine. Now this weapon he lent to a stouter swordsman. Himself, though durst not under welter of waters wager his life as loyal liegeman. So lost he his glory, honour of earls. With the other not so, who girded him now for the grim encounter. Beowulf spake, bairn of Ecgtheow, Have mind, thou honoured offspring of Healfdane, gold friend of men. Now I go on this quest, sovereign wise, what once was said, if in thy cause it came that I should lose my life, thou wouldst loyal bide to me, though fallen, in father's place. 
Be guardian now to this group of my thanes, my warrior friends, if war should seize me. And the goodly gifts thou gavest me, Hrothgar beloved, to Hygelac send. Geatland's king may ken by the gold, Hrethel's son see, when he stares at the treasure, that I got me a friend for goodness famed, and joyed, while I could, in my jewel bestower. And let Unferth wield this wondrous sword, Earl far honoured, this heirloom precious, hard of edge. With thrunting I seek doom of glory, or death shall take me. After these words the Wader Geat lord boldly hastened, biding never answer at all. The ocean floods closed o'er the hero. Long while of the day fled, ere he felt the floor of the sea. Soon found the fiend, who the flood domain, sword hungry held these hundred winters, greedy and grim, that some guest from above, some man, was raiding her monster realm. She grasped out for him with grisly claws, and the warrior seized, yet scathed she not his body hale. The breastplate hindered, as she strove to shatter the sark of war, the linked harness, with loathsome hand. Then bore this brine wolf, when bottom she touched, the lord of rings to the lair she haunted, whilst vainly he strove, though his valour held, weapon to wield against wondrous monsters that sore beset him. Sea-beasts many tried with fierce tusks to tear his mail, and swarmed on the stranger. But soon he marked he was now in some hall, he knew not which, where water never could work him harm, nor through the roof could reach him ever fangs of the flood. Firelight he saw, beams of a blaze that brightly shone. Then the warrior was ware of that wolf of the deep, mere wife monstrous. For mighty stroke he swung his blade, and the blow withheld not, then sang on her head that seemly blade its war-song wild. But the warrior found the light of battle was loath to bite, to harm the heart. Its hard edge failed the noble at need, yet had known of old strife hand to hand, and had helmets cloven, doomed men's fighting gear. First time this for the gleaming blade that its glory fell, Firm still stood, nor failed in valour, heedful of high deeds, high glax kinsman, flung away fretted sword, featly jewelled, the angry earl, on earth it lay steel-edged and stiff. His strength he trusted, hand-gripe of might, so man shall do, whenever in war he weans to earn him lasting fame, nor fears for his life. Seized them by shoulder, shrank not from combat the Giatish war-prince Grendel's mother. Flung then the fierce one, filled with wrath, his deadly foe, that she fell to ground. Swift on her part she paid him back with grisly grasp, and grappled with him. Spent with struggle stumbled the warrior, fiercest of fighting men, fell adown. On the hall guest she hurled herself, hent her short sword, broad and brown-edged, the bairn to avenge the soul-born son. On his shoulder lay braided breast-mail, barring death, withstanding entrance of edge or blade. Life would have ended for Ekgthiau's son under wide earth, for that earl of Geats, had his armour of war not aided him, battle-net hard, and holy God wielded the victory, wisest maker. The Lord of Heaven allowed his cause, and easily rose the earl erect. Mid the battle-gear saw he a blade triumphant, old sword of Eotens, with edge of proof, warrior's heirloom, weapon unmatched. Save only twas more than other men to bandy of battle could bear at all. As the giants had wrought it, ready and keen, seized then its chain-hilt, the Skilding's chieftain, bold and battle-grim, brandished the sword, reckless of life, and so wrathfully smote that it gripped her neck and grasped her hard, her bone-rings breaking. 
The blade pierced through that fated one's flesh. To floor she sank. Bloody the blade! He was blithe of his deed. Then blazed forth light. T'was bright within, as when from the sky there shines unclouded heaven's candle. The hall he scanned. By the wall then went he. His weapon raised high by its hilts, the Hygelac thane, angry and eager. That edge was not useless to the warrior now. He wished with speed Grendel to Guerdon for grim raids many. For the war he waged on western Danes oftener far than an only time, when of Hrothgar's half-companions he slew in slumber, in sleep devoured, fifteen men of the folk of Danes, and as many others outward bore his horrible prey. Well paid for that the wrathful prince, for now prone he saw Grendel, stretched there, spent with war, spoiled of life, so scathed had left him Heorot's battle. The body sprang far, when after death it endured the blow, sword-stroke savage that severed its head. Soon then saw the sage companions who waited with Hrothgar, watching the flood, that the tossing waters turbid grew, blood-stained the mere. Old men together, hoary-haired of the hero, spake. The warrior would not, they weened, again, proud of conquest, come to seek their mighty master. To many it seemed the wolf of the waves had won his life. The ninth hour came. The noble Skildings left the headland. Homeward went the gold friend of men. But the guests sat on, stared at the surges, sick in heart, and wished, yet weaned not, their winsome lord again to see. Now that sword began, from blood of the fight, in battle droppings, war blade to wane. Twas a wondrous thing that all of it melted as ice is wont, when frosty fetters the father loosens, unwinds the wave bonds, wielding all seasons and times. The true God, he! Nor took from that dwelling the Duke of the Geats, save only the head and that hilt with all blazoned with jewels. The blade had melted, burned was the bright sword. Her blood was so hot, so poisoned the hell sprite who perished within there. Soon he was swimming, who safe saw in combat downfall of demons. Up dove through the flood, the clashing waters were cleansed now, waste of waves, where the wandering fiend her life days left, and this lapsing world. Swam then to strand the sailor's refuge, sturdy in spirit, of sea booty glad, of burden brave he bore with him. Went then to greet him, and God they thanked, the Thane band, choice of their chieftain blithe, that safe and sound they could see him again. Soon from the hardy one, helmet and armour deftly they doffed, now drowsed the mere, water neath welkin, with war-blood stained. Forth they fared by the footpaths thence, merry at heart the highways measured well-known roads. Courageous men carried the head from the cliff by the sea, an arduous task for all the band, the firm in fight, since four were needed on the shaft of slaughter, strenuously to bear to the gold hall Grendel's head. So presently to the palace there, foemen fearless, fourteen Geats, marching, came. Their master of clan, mighty amid them, the meadow ways trod. Strode then within the sovereign thane, fearless in fight of fame renowned, hardy hero Hrothgar to greet. And next by the hair into hall was born Grendel's head, where the henchmen were drinking, an awe to clan and queen alike, a monster of marvel. The men looked on. Beowulf spake, bairn of Egthiaw. Lo, now this sea booty, 
son of Healfdane, lord of Skildings, we've lustily brought thee sign of glory. Thou seest it here. Not lightly did I with my life escape. In war under water this work I essayed with endless effort, and even so my strength had been lost had the Lord not shielded me. Not a whit could I with fronting do in work of war, though the weapon is good, yet a sword the sovereign of men vouchsafed me to spy on the wall there in splendour hanging, old, gigantic. How oft he guides the friendless white! And I fought with that brand, felling in fight, since fate was with me, the house's wardens. That war-sword, then all burned, bright blade, when the blood gushed o'er it, battle-sweat hot. But the hilt I brought back from my foes. So avenged I their fiendish deeds, death-fall of Danes, as was due and right. And this is my hest, that in Heorot now safe thou canst sleep with thy soldier band, and every thane of all thy folk, both old and young, no evil fear. Skilding's lord, from that side again, aught ill for thy earls, as erst thou must. Then the golden hilt, for that grey-haired leader, hoary hero, in hand was laid, giant wrought, old, so owned and enjoyed it after downfall of devils, the Danish lord, wonder smith's work, since the world was rid of that grim-souled fiend, the foe of God, murder marked, and his mother as well. Now it passed into power of the people's king, best of all that the oceans bound, who have scattered their gold o'er Scandia's isle. Hrothgar spake, the hilt he viewed, heirloom old, where was etched the rise of that far-off fight, where the floods o'erwhelmed, raging waves, the race of giants, fearful their fate, a folk estranged from God eternal, whence Guerdon due, in that waste of waters the wielder paid them. So, on the guard of shining gold, in runic staves it was rightly said, for whom the serpent-traced sword was wrought, best of blades, in bygone days, and the hilt well wound. The wise one spake, son of Hjalfdane. Silent were all. Lo, so may he say who sooth and right follows mid folk, of far times mindful, a land-warden old, that this earl belongs to the better breed. So, born aloft, thy fame must fly, O friend, my Beowulf, far and wide, O folksteads many, firmly thou shall all maintain, mighty strength with mood of wisdom, love of mine will I assure thee, as a while ago I promised. Thou shalt prove a stay in future, in far-off years, to folk of thine, to the heroes a help. Was not Heremod thus, to offspring of Ecgwela, honour skildings, nor grew for their grace, but for grisly slaughter, for doom of death to the Danishman? He slew, wrath-swollen, his shoulder comrades, companions at board, so he passed alone, chieftain haughty, from human cheer. Though him the Maker with might endowed, delights of power, and uplifted high above all men, yet blood fierce his mind, his breast hoard grew, no bracelets gave he to Danes, as was due. He endured all joyless, strain of struggle and stress of woe, long feud with his folk. Here find thy lesson. Of virtue advise thee, this verse I have said for thee, wise from lapsed winters. Wondrous seems how to sons of men almighty God in the strength of his spirit sendeth wisdom, estate, high station. He swayeth all things, 
whiles he letteth right lustily fare the heart of the hero of high-born race, in seat ancestral assigns him bliss. His folk's sure fortress in fee to hold puts in his power great parts of the earth, empire so ample that end of it this wanter of wisdom weaneth none. So he waxes in wealth, no wise can harm him, illness or age. No evil cares shadow his spirit, no sword hate threatens from ever an enemy. All the world wends at his will. No worse he knoweth, till all within him obstinate pride waxes and wakes, while the warden slumbers the spirit's sentry. Sleep is too fast, which masters his might, and the murderer nears, stealthily shooting the shafts from his bow. End of section four of Beowulf.